Hello everyone, this is Charles here from Valves and More and Mellotone Kits. And today I'm inviting you over to my workbench so we can put some time into the, I think it's technically the third prototype now of the headphone kit amplifier. It's taken a lot of work to even get this far. And today I'm just going to start populating the top plate for it and talk a little bit about some of the design decisions and uh, some of the components that we're working with. So I think I'm just gonna dive right in here and let's start at one end and work our way around. I think probably the best thing I can start with is to put these handles on because it's gonna make it a whole lot easier to handle this thing. Oh, I guess while I'm doing this, I can give the usual caution. But first, caution everyone. <laughs> Electronics in tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them, and always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so first of all, this is something that we haven't done with any of our amplifiers, is to put handles on. I mean, other than the previous prototype of this guy. It just makes moving around a heavy amplifier so much easier. We actually do the same thing with our custom power tube tester. We have a couple of nice handles on it. And you know, that thing weighs a ton. So having these available just makes it a whole lot easier to navigate and move it around. It can't stay on the workbench all the time. Okay, so we're just gonna carefully get this on here. Of course, for anybody that's watching this that has built one of our kits, you'll know that we're hyper cautious about scratching up our beautiful top plates. Thankfully, we've actually improved the uh, finishing of them a little bit recently. Before uh, this plate right here, we were waxing them all. And there's nothing wrong with the wax. They give a nice durable finish. It looks beautiful. It takes a lot of time to clean it up though. And there are newer finishes that are actually even more durable. And what we've got here is sort of a spray coat finish that we're testing out. And so far it's proving to be pretty darn good. So we might switch over to using that with our other plates. You know, after we give it a bit of a trial run here. So far it seems really scratch resistant though. So let's just get these on. These handles are pretty nice. They're not the um, they're not the heaviest handles, but they're very durable. Same ones that we have on the second prototype, and of course that weighs a ton. Okay, let's just make sure these are all snugged down. Good. Okay. Take a look at that. Now, of course, you're going to say, "Well, you just blocked your." Your corner holes up here well not entirely you can see you can get in on a little bit of an angle and we've had to get into tighter spots before this might change in the final version of the amp but for now this is the uh this is the on center that we've chosen off the edge because it actually matches what our other amplifiers are all right what's next here um I guess we can work probably bottom to top. So we consider this sort of the back of the amp and this is the front. So right here is where we're gonna put our Alps pot. That's this guy right here. Now normally whenever you're installing an Alps pot, you wanna solder the PCB onto it first. And this is the standard sort of Alps PCB that you see everywhere. We send out the kits with them and they're fine but we actually think we're going to be able to do a better job with this and maybe make our own version. So I'm not going to install this right now and I'm going to consider this more of a test fitting of some of these parts. They're almost certainly going to have to come back off. So I'm going to undo the nut and the washer on here. And I believe I want it installed as if the PCB were facing this way. So I'm going to flip the plate over, feed that through. Oh, and actually, I'll just show this real quick here too. You'll notice there's usually a sort of guide pin here that stops it from turning. 
we have to take these off of these out pots for our other kits because we mount them directly into the wood plinth. Now on the second prototype we we used one of these that had it taken off and it didn't actually move it around at all if you snug it down nicely. So I'm going to try that but if it doesn't work we're going to do something else with it and I'll show you that in a bit. So we're going to get that mounted. And there isn't a lot of thread to work with here. Let's see if there's enough. Again, this is the first time I'm mounting all this stuff on this plate. So if something doesn't work out, well, it's just going to be a learning experience. And either we're going to have to modify something, swap out a part, or possibly modify the plate somehow. Oh, we've... We've got it on there. Okay, now I just have to find the right socket for it. If only I were better prepared. Is that the right one? Aha! That never happens. First try. Okay, so I'm going to tilt it up and hold this in the spot. I want to keep it on. And I'm not going to snug it down too tight right now. No need to really crank it down. This is, like I said before, almost certainly coming off. So there we go. Let's get that knob on there and see how it looks. These are really nice anodized aluminum volume knobs that we include with our kits. We have a silver version and a black version. Sorry, it's really not showing up well on camera. Let's catch the light with it. There we go. That's better. So we've got a set screw on the end. Let's make sure we back that off all the way. And let's make sure this is turned. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, there we go. There's a great example of why test fitting is important. The set screw is over here. You know what else is over here? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to mount this just temporarily on a little bit of an angle here. But that informs on the rest of the build procedure. We cannot have it go on before the handles. Or, uh, it's actually pretty close to 90 degrees. Maybe uh, maybe it will actually work that way. But there we go. We've got a beautiful volume pot and knob now. All right, what's next? Well, on this amplifier, we're going to have two sets of inputs. We've heard from people uh, already that they really appreciate being able to switch between different inputs on here. And considering this is going to be sort of an all-in-one app, it's gonna be an integrated amplifier that can drive us a pair of speakers. And it's going to be a headphone amplifier. We thought having switchable inputs just kind of made sense on it. So this is the switch that we're going to use for that. It's a double pull, double throw, and these are the switches that we include with all of our kits for doing the exact same thing. I, I think we use these on the Universal and uh, Universal 6 or 12 SN7 and the E80CC for switching the inputs. And this is the kind of label that these switches come with. Look at that. Isn't that a piece of junk? That is how they arrive. That garbage. Because we've been dealing with labels like that, we're doing something different with this amplifier. Thankfully, for that switch, we don't even need a label because we're just switching between two sets of inputs and it's pretty obvious left or right. Uh, we try not to put labels on things that are obvious, but we do have other switches here where we did have to put labels. Example, this is our heater on and off, on, off, makes sense. Switching between the headphones and the speakers also makes sense. And our impeded switch for the different output impedances for the headphones. And I have to say, this new method of doing the labels, I absolutely love it. Uh, what we're doing here is we're actually engraving this out of the plate using the CNC machine and a, and a really, really tiny bit. I think it's like 230 seconds or something like that. I've broken a few of them. <laughs> Anyway, so we engrave this out. I think it only goes a couple of millimeters deep, and then we do a dyed epoxy fill on it. And it hardens up, and it is not coming out of there. We can safely brush the aluminum afterwards and then give it its spray coating, and I mean, it just looks beautiful. There's one tiny flaw on this one that 
uh, I don't know if I can get this in focus properly. You'll see on the red here, there's a tiny little metal pip in the middle, and that's just where the CNC missed grabbing that on its cycle. But that's obviously going to get fixed in the next version. But I am super happy with this. I love how it looks. And the whole plate design is actually meant to be somewhat reminiscent of old console systems where you would have uh, sort of an integrated system. You'd have a record player or a tape deck. And then next to it, you'd have this sort of vertical rectangular control panel, something like this. And that would give you access to everything you needed to control the system. So it's meant to be a bit reminiscent of that, but in uh, an overall form factor that's a lot smaller and more modernized, and hopefully it's gonna be really good looking. All right, what's next here? So we've got the switch, yeah, okay. I'm blabbering away here, so of course, I forgot what I was actually doing. So we're gonna put the switch in, and we need a little bit more thread, so we're gonna put that nut down as far as it's gonna go, and let's see if that gets us enough. Ooh, just barely. I think we've got enough there. So just like with the Alps pot, I'm gonna get this started. Mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to take that bottom nut off. I think we have to do that with the other amplifiers too. So I'm gonna take that off. This is one disadvantage of working with plates that are this thick, is that sometimes things just don't fit right. There, that's a bit better. Okay, let's get you on there. And I'm pretty sure I've got the right socket for this one. Let's see, what is that? That's 9 sixteenths. Uh, uh, uh. Nope. All right, what's next? Uh... Is it? It's probably metric. 14 mil? Hmm. I might not actually have this one. 9 sixteenths. I don't think I have the correct socket for this. Okay, well that's as far as that's going right now. I'm not going to go and rummage through Dad's lab and probably make a mess of things. Instead, it's just going to be finger snug, which isn't really snug. So there is our input switch, left, right. All right, now what about our RCA jacks? We've got these somewhat garish, but really nice looking, shiny plated RCA jacks. They're the same type that we use with the other kits. Of course, we like to have um, sort of part compatibility as much as possible. It's really great because it makes it easier to stock things. And these have these great washers here. So red, of course, is going to go on the top because we consider that the back. And I'm just going to get these started. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at tightening them down. One. And these washers are really neat. They've actually inspired the next part that we're going to put on, where we actually had to make a bit of a change to it. And essentially, we just copied these washers. So I'll show you that in a bit. And ah, there's the last one. Okay, now I think just like 
with the switch here. I'm not going to snug these down fully. I'm just going to bring them down to finger tight. I'll tighten them down more later. I actually have to do a little bit of a uh, modification on these as well. It's always easier to solder these whenever you've roughed up the surface of these little wings a little bit here. So I just take a little bit of light paper and go in there and do that. But of course, because I'm on camera here, I forgot to do that first. So, you know, you get to see this in real time. Imagine how much of this stuff has to come back off the plate every time we forget something like that. <laughs> Alright, next up, we've got our quarter inch headphone jack. Alright, so these jacks are great. They're simple, it's an older design. What we love about them is that they're completely open. So it's easy to clean contacts, it's easy to work on them if there's an issue. Uh, they're very, very simple. The only thing that is a problem with these jacks is that the ground is not isolated from the plate on them. So just like with the RCAs, we decided that we just need a little isolator washer. You can see it here. And that was really easy to just 3D print. We have a little 3D printer here. And this is the first time we've actually made a part for an amplifier using it. So this is really neat. It's gonna keep it isolated from the ground and we're gonna keep it isolated from the ground because we are going to switch between the speakers and the headphones and this is how we're doing it. We're gonna switch the ground in and out. So let's get this on here and we'll see if my uh, socket set here has the right size socket. It hasn't had the right one for a few other things so far. <laughs> Dad definitely has the more equipped bench. Mm, that's a little bit big, actually. Let's see, what's the next size down? Half inch? Is that a half inch? Ah, it's a half inch, okay. It's funny, the mixtures of metric and imperial that we have here. So there's our quarter inch headphone out. Now we have a series of three different switches that we're gonna put in. And it's going to be really easy to confuse these, especially considering two of them look almost identical. One of these is a simple on-off, so we only have two contacts, and thankfully, let me get this here, thankfully they've actually labeled on-off. Not all switches do that, so that's really nice. And this one is an on, off, on, and I guess they don't put off on the middle. Hmm. Anyway, so this is the one that's going to switch between the grounds. So the center pole is going to go to the ground plane and one side is going to go to the headphone jack ground and the other side is going to go to the ground for the uh, outputs for the speakers. So that's how we're going to switch those out. Okay, so let's start off with the simplest one and I think I'm going to have to take off both of these here just like with the other switch. And we want to make sure we get the positioning correct. Let's see. So off is up here, on is down here. So currently it's in the on position. We're going to leave it there. And hmm, we actually have a lot of room there. Maybe I can put that nut back on. Let's try it and see if that works. Does this have a bigger post than the other switches? It looks like it does actually, by a couple millimeters. It's funny how a couple of millimeters can really make a difference in these parts. Okay, now what is that gonna take? Do I have the right socket for you? I do not. Okay. Carefully. There we go. There we go. Off, on. 
one. We're including this switch because just like with the other amplifiers that we have, the uh, heating, uh, the heater supply is actually going to be supplied by a, um, a DC switch mode. It's not 100% necessary in this one. All the tubes are running 6 volts. The power transformer that we have is actually running 6 volts. But the, um, the low noise floor that we get from running a DC is just... It's absolutely marvelous. We've tried running AC heaters before. Um, we've done very careful, tight windings, point-to-point -point wiring on it. We actually do use AC heaters on, um, I think it's the GU50 that we use it on. Maybe it was also the URI. And it's fine there. Uh, in those cases, I believe it's going to the power tubes. And they're great. Uh, but it, in the cases of preamp tubes, you really want to use a DC heater on them, and it just makes all the difference. So there's our two switches. We've got speaker, headphone, heater off, heater on. Now the fun one. Take a look at this guy right here. This is a two-pole, four-throw switch with a... Um, this type of knob has a certain name to it. It has something to do with birds. Is it a chicken beak knob? Something like that. Anyway, so this is gonna be our selector switch for impedances. And we've actually already modified this guy. Normally, these nuts and these screws are backwards and they're on the bottom side. But because this is gonna get a lot of use and there's a lot of force involved in turning it, we've cut two holes in the back here that are aligned with these two screws. So what we can do is we can align it on here and it's not gonna move once it's tightened down. So let's get this off. And then I'm gonna to have to make sure this is in the right position first. It should be, but let's make sure. Okay, so it's all the way to the left. That means that this needs to align with the 50. So this is going to align with the hole on that side, which is right here. So I'm gonna bring that in. And, ooh, that was a nice snap. You always love it whenever something snaps together. We're gonna throw our washer back on. And I think we've got just enough meat here for that. Perfect. And the right socket too. Sometimes I have the right one. All right, great. Now let's put that knob on. And let's tighten down that set screw. Hey, hey, hey. This is starting to look like something now. Are you ready? Yeah. How's that for a good snap? We love buttons. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for joining me for this. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get you in here for the next segment whenever we build the next section. It's a work in progress. Uh, we're working on the plinth design right now, which is completely different from everything else that we've worked on. And uh, of course I'm working on the plate design that's going to go down in here for the tubes, the PCB that's going to go underneath it. And, you know, a dozen other projects that are going on here at the same time. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me and um, cheers.